Welcome to New Line 99, a channel about the TI-99 4A home computer. This episode is about basic programming. TI Basic is the only piece of software that was built into the system. BASIC, an acronym for a Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code, is a programming language with its origins in the 1960s. It was created as a way to standardize entering instructions on computers. BASIC doesn't use a compiler, but instead each command is parsed and executed in real time. The concept was a user can learn BASIC in one type of system, and then when the time came to use another type of system, they could transfer a lot of their knowledge to other platforms that also use BASIC. Each type of system had a few differences in their basic commands depending on the features computer companies wanted to allow the users access to. And the TI also had its share of unique commands. If you don't have a physical TI-99 system, there are several emulators available. The one that I prefer to use is called Classic 99 by Mike Brent. It has appealing features and a fairly accurate emulation of the system, and it's really easy to use. When you first start up TI Basic, it comes up with a greater than symbol and a blinking cursor. This is called a prompt, where you'll enter your basic commands. Most computers have a way to execute immediate basic commands, commands that are intended to give a result right away. And the TI was no different. Print is one of the most common commands, and it's used to output values to the screen. So if you type print, followed by an expression to print, and then press enter, the computer responds with the result. Variables are symbols that represent a stored value. You can assign variables by typing the variable name, equals, and then an expression that will be stored in it. Variables that contain a string of text must have a dollar sign at the end of their names. The practical use of BASIC is to organize many commands into a program. To create a program, you give each of your commands a line number. And when you go to run the program, the TI starts from the lowest number and works its way up sequentially. The standard practice is to start with line number 10 and to go up by 10s with line 20, 30, 40. So then if you find you left something out, you can go back later and add a line 25 and the computer will execute it between lines 20 and 30. If you want to change the order of execution in real time, you can use the go to command to move execution immediately to a specific line. If you want to accept user input, you can use the input statement followed by the name of the variable that you want to store that value. The if then statement can be used to go to a different location in the program if certain conditions are present. Type if, followed by a condition, the keyword then, and then a line number. When the condition is true, it will go to that line number. The whole point of giving computer tasks to do is to reduce the burden of human calculation, decision, and repetition. How can TI Basic accomplish this? We're coming up on holiday season, so let's demonstrate some TI Basic code by having it play a melody of the 12 days of Christmas while displaying the lyrics. We'll clear the screen first by calling the clear subprogram with call clear. The melody of the 12 days of Christmas uses 10 note frequencies, so we'll define them through variable assignments. Sound frequencies on the TI are referenced in cycles per second, or hertz. We'll also define four durations, 16th, 8th, quarter, and half note in milliseconds of duration. The 12 gifts in the song are repeated numerous times. It would be beneficial to store them in an array variable. Dim, short for dimension, allows us to store an enumerated list of items. The read command pulls in sequential pieces of information from a data section elsewhere in the program. A for next loop is used to repeat these steps for a number of iterations. In the case of the 12 days of Christmas, we'll load 12 things in. We've got the partridge in a rare tree, two turtle doves, three French hens, all the way up to 12 drummers drumming. Each verse starts on a certain day of Christmas. We will use another array to hold the ordinal values of the days, first through 12th, using the read command again. With all the important information loaded, we start the song. The song verses go from the first day through the twelfth day, so we'll use a for next loop from 1 to 12. The computer will execute everything between for and next for as long as the counter variable is in range. We start the loop with the first bit of lyrics and the first bit of melody. This is where all those variables we created start coming in handy. When we start playing the music and showing the lyrics, we can refer to all the variables and arrays we created. When it's running, the program will substitute the names we made with the values they store. We grab the day number out of the array. We play the first note with call sound with the duration S, which we gave the value of 150. The note low G, 
which has the frequency 392, and 0, which is the loudest volume. Inside each verse, we print the list of gifts. An if-then statement is used to check for the last line in the verse, so we can put a period at the end, using a go-to statement to jump over the part that puts a comma on the lines that aren't last. Each verse counts down the list of gifts for the current day, all the way down to the partridge. So we'll use another for next loop counting down from the current verse number to one. Because we're counting down or decrementing, we have to specify step minus one. We put the line loop inside the verse loop, and this is what's called a nested loop. Every verse ends with a partridge in a pear tree, but on every verse after the first one, it's preceded by and. An if then statement is used to check for the first verse. Within the list of gifts part of the song, there are seven unique phrases of music, so we can make reusable code segments for each of them. We will get them to play by pushing them as a subroutine, so that after they're finished running, the program will return to the routine that called them. The go sub command is used for this purpose. When we're done with playing the music phrase, the return command takes us back to after the go sub line. On go sub can be used to give line numbers of multiple lines to go to depending on the value of the given expression. If the value is 1, it will go sub to the first line number. If it's 2, it'll go sub to the second line number, and so on. Verses 2 through 4 use a different musical phrase before and after the five golden rings part. So we make two of these on go sub commands based on where we are in the song. At the end of it all, we can use the end command where we want the program to stop execution. We can list the program with the list command. With the song done, we can type the run command and the program will load and start to execute. 2 minutes and 45 seconds of music and lyrics just from 106 lines of code. If we're satisfied with the program and want to keep it, the program can be stored with the save command, followed by where to save it, usually either cassette or diskette. That's all on TI Basic Programming for this time. We'll catch you next time. Bye.